Hey guys, it's Vicki. Welcome to my channel. So before I get into the video, I want to talk to you um, about some videos I'll be following this one. Um, I'm going to do some new things on my channel. So I will actually make a video after this talking about the changes coming to the channel. Of course, I'll still do Poshmark videos as well as, um, you know, thrift hauls. Anyway, um, so yeah, so if you would like to see this video, which is how much I made this month on Poshmark, as well as what sold for me, then stay tuned. Okay, guys, so, <sighs> let's see. I wrote all of my numbers down. Um, so for the month of December, I sold 107 items. I made right under $1,500 in sales. So that's like not my net. That's not what I'm bringing home. That's just in sales. And I have not calculated my net yet because I still have things pending. What not, what not, blah, blah, blah. All right. I am going to try to do this video like I did the month before last. So, so in October's video, I was able to put a picture right here. Um, of the item that sold and I was able to tell you about it. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do that because I got a new camera for Christmas thanks to my boyfriend and <sighs> I don't I don't know. I'm I'm this is all gonna be completely new to me because I'm used to editing my videos on iMovie on my phone. I'm used to doing all of everything on my phone. So I'm gonna be trying to edit this stuff on my computer and I'm scared to death. So I'm going to try my hardest to actually put the photos right here. If they don't go, I'm sorry, but I'll still try to, I'll, I'll figure out something. Anyway, um, so I just had some mail sell. So, Woohoo! This, this weekend has been great. Um, just this weekend, I sold $400 in sales. So that's good. I'm going to start, if I can find my spot. So what I did was I had sold a few bundles and I'm not really going to talk about those because I've really, I'm not going to say I screwed up, but I was giving like 30% off of three items and man, it took a lot off. And then I would still offer them, like they would add stuff to a bundle. They wouldn't send me an offer. So I would like send them an offer even though they'd already got 30% taken off like I, that's how desperate I was to get rid of stuff I'm just saying my goal for December was to um, basically thin out my inventory I have so much stuff right now but I have a lot of things that I want to get rid of because I don't want them in my closet anymore I've lowered my prices like I literally have things that are going for basically nothing I think I might make a two dollar profit which is fine because a lot of the stuff that I get, I pay under a dollar to two dollars for. So it's I'm still making at least my money back. So let's go ahead and I will start. All right. So the first thing that sold was a vintage Bart Simpson Jingle Bell Batman sweatshirt. Um, I sold that for twenty dollars. I got that. I didn't know if I was going to get anything for it. I saw some comps for that stuff. And, you know, vintage stuff usually sells pretty well, especially like Simpsons. So, um, sold that for $20. Uh, a pair of Free People black skinny jeans. Sold for $15. A Lucky Brand thermal shirt. Sold for $15. This is what I'm going to do. So, <laughs> um, I had a pair of Dansko Black Suede Mary Jane Peep Toes. They sold for $32. If you ever run into Dansko shoes, pick them up. If they're in good shape, pick them up because they sell. They really do. And usually for a pretty decent price. Um, definitely pick them up. A Jean-Pierre white cable knit sweater. Sold for $35. Uh, a 
uh, Vintage U St. Laurent Navy Block Heels. Sold for $15. Now, if those were newer, you St. Laurent, I'm sure they would have gone for a lot more. But these were vintage. They were kind of basic, like early 90s, late 80s style. So I just let them go because I didn't pay but $2. I'm going to be real. I paid $2 for them. And they were in great shape. But I was like, you know what, as long as I make my money back, a little bit of profit, we're good. And that's what I did. Plus, I did look at the comps after I bought them. They weren't good. All right, so seven for all mankind dojo wide leg jeans. I sold for $32. So with the seven for all mankind jeans, look for the ones that say dojo written in. Those ones sell for a good price. So $32 is probably actually cheap <laughs> because I've seen them sell for like $69 used. So... Um, keep your eyes open when you go to stores for that brand. Um, I had a Brooks Brothers 346 Navy Pullover Vest. It sold for $20. A Cache Floral Sequin Strapless Dress. New with tag, sold for $17. I had two pairs of mini Bowden corduroy pants sell for $23. A Betsy Johnson weekend travel tote bag sold for $16. Now this bag was honestly in excellent condition. Like it was brand new. Um, you can see right here. It, it was in perfect condition. They still had like the plastic from the tags on it. The only problem was the zipper was broke. And I know nothing about sewing or fixing zippers or anything like that. I didn't take home ec. My boyfriend did. But I never did. <laughs> so like I, I had no idea what to do. I guess I could have Googled it. But I was just like whatever. You know I paid 50 cents for the bag. I made a profit and that's all that mattered. But the girl um, she sent a the love note whenever she had accepted it and she said that she was able to get the zipper fixed in five minutes I was like well that's awesome good for her you know <sighs> so um, a Vera Bradley pink floral shoulder bag for $18 a cabbie gray ruched long sleeve top for $21. A pair of Sam Edelman Romy wedge sandals for $15. I sold a Lane Bryant tie waist poncho sweater for $21. Um, I did have a bundle of two shirts from Tord. Um, so those were like well, it was $14 each, so close enough to $15. Um, but there's just two uh, shirts from Tord. Uh, Cabby pinstripe trousers sold for $15. A Prana Merrill hooded sweater dress in chevron stripe sold for $25. I had a mod cloth guest of honor dress by Effie's Heart. It sold for $28. That dress was pretty great. Like, I went to a new thrift store that I didn't even know existed. So, like, I walk in, I'm like, I'm flabbergasted because it's just like, it's so huge. There's just rows and rows of clothes. And I'm so happy. I was like, oh, yay. I have plenty of time. I can sit here and I can go through stuff. So I found the dress, and I didn't know when I picked it up that it was mod cloth. I had no idea. It just said Effie's heart on it, but it was in such amazing condition, and it was a really cute style. So I grabbed it up, and sure enough, it was mod cloth. And mod cloth seems to always sell for me. So mod cloth always, if you see mod cloth, get it. All right. 
Um, Lily Pulitzer Vanna strapless dress sold for twenty-seven. Uh, Harley Davidson Atlanta long sleeve t-shirt sold for twenty-two. The White House Black Market Metallic Cable Knit V-neck sweater sold for fifteen. As you see, I add in, I try to add in as much detail as I can to my titles, and then I'll copy that and put it in my description because there's a lot of he say, she say about SEO when it comes to, um, and if you don't know what SEO is, it's search engine optimization. Anyway, so there's a lot of, you know, talk about SEO in our, in our descriptions and our titles and I mean, I guess it does make sense. I do see my stuff on Google that's on Poshmark, so obviously it has something to do with that. So I always just try to add in as much detail as possible for that reason. Okay, I sold a pair of Anthropology, the AG Stevie Plum Brown Corduroys. The AG is the Adriano Gold sh something. You probably know what I'm talking about. If not, just go type in Anthropology Adriano Gold. Starts with an S and it'll tell you. <laughs> I could tell you. I, I mean, I guess I could click on the picture and tell you. <sighs> Maybe. Adriana Gold Schmied. There. AG. All right, for $34, I sold a rare Michael Simon rabbit fur cat sweater. Now, this sweater was very unique. Okay, so this sweater had actual real rabbit fur around the collar. But the collar was supposed to be the, the black cat that was on the front of the sweater. It was supposed to be that cat's tail wrapping around your neck. And then at the bottom of the sweater, it had the cat with his paw out, right? And he's pulling the sweater up. And then the sides were like that too. It was so adorable. And I, I saw them. I comped them for like 200 But I was impatient. And it, I, you know, when you're impatient, you're impatient. That's probably where I go wrong. But I feel like I'd be waiting forever for somebody to pay $200 for it. So um, as the one that I comp is still sitting there and has not been purchased yet. All right. Um, a LuLaRoe orange printed dress. I do not know what style it is. Um, I sold it for $15. Uh, Nine West Ambitious Pant... Blech. Nine West Ambitious Patent Leather Heels, sold for $15. Um, Sam Edelman Felicia Snake Skin Flat, sold for $15. Tord Black Skinny Jeans, sold for $15. I didn't know if these were ever going to sell. I've had them for a while. And the, the issue with them is somebody had altered them, I believe, because the, the insides had been, I mean, it looked professionally done. It didn't look like just some random person did it. I, I don't think, I don't know. But anyway, so it just like they had taken in the waist. So I, of course, measured the waist and put that information in the description. So if they ended up saying, oh, this isn't the size, you know, 16, I'd be like, well, you know, it's in the description. <laughs> Um, it's, that's one thing I don't like is when I find things and they've been altered and you don't realize it until after you've already got it. That's what happened with those. I was like, Ooh, Torrid. And I actually originally got them for myself. And then I got them home because I got them from the thrift store. I wasn't going to try them on. I was like, eh, it was at the bins. So anyway, all right. Um, Sam Edelman leopard print Katie Wedge. I sold for $20. Uh, Dale of Norway Vintage Wool Sweater. I sold for $30. Now. A lot of people be like, oh my gosh, why would you sell that for so cheap? The reason I sold that for so cheap is because um, it had a stain on the front. Um, and I did not want to put it in the wash or take it to get dry cleaned. 
So I sold it as is with the little stain, which it really wasn't that noticeable, but a collector may notice that. Apparently these are, if you ever find this brand, Dale of Norway, buy it, buy it, buy it. Because it's a very well-known, um, I guess it's, it's like a Bolo brand, which is a be on the lookout brand. So I think I learned about that from, oh gosh, whose video was I watching? It was the, the girl and the guy, the husband and wife who sell on eBay all the time. And then they have like a girl who takes her pictures. Oh, I can't think of what it's called. But anyway, they only sell on eBay. And it's the blonde headed guy. And then the girl, the, the wife has like pink or no purple and blue or all different colored hair all the time. They're like in Florida or something. Anyway, if you want, you probably know who it is. But anyway, I learned about that from them. So of course I found my first one. I was like, yay, finally. And it was actually, I mean, besides that little tiny, I mean, it was a stain, like the size of, I mean, it was just tiny. Besides that, it was an excellent condition. No snags, nothing. So, all right. I sold another pair of Seven for All Mankind Dojo Wide Leg Jeans. For $32. Um... It was funny because I had bought a mystery box with my first pair of dojo jeans. And that's when I realized that they sell pretty decent. So I was at Goodwill and I was looking through their jeans. And at my Goodwill, the jeans are $5.75 each. So I was like, well, if I see a good brand, I'll grab them up. So I'm looking and I find, I always find seven for all mankind. But it's always like just the stuff that sits forever and never sells. But that day particularly I was looking and I found one pair of dojo and right next to it was another pair of dojo I was like oh, yay so yeah they I think I still have I don't know maybe I sold already I think I sold both of them I think I don't know all right so yeah the dojo jeans sold for 32 um I sold a Kinsey olive green Rebecca stretch crepe blazer that's a lot uh for 20 bucks And it was really cute. I got it from Goodwill also. Paid full price, which is like $5.75. Um, a Free People Eyelet Peplum Blouse. I sold for $15. It was basically new without tags. I got it from uh, the Final Cut, which is a... It's a store in Augusta, Georgia. It's the Anthropology and Urban Outfitters. Um what do you want to call it like the factory store like where they send like they send I guess returns to that place as well as stuff that they use on the models and stuff like that it's a it's a great store it's got a lot of awesome stuff it's still kind of pricey though because for that top I actually took a I actually paid $15 for that top <laughs> and I sold it for 15 so obviously I only made $12 off of it but some of the other things that I got when I was there, I actually made more money off of. So it equaled out. It was fine. Um, but yeah, I had to make sure that I at least made over $10 for it to at least have me make any type of profit whatsoever. <sighs> okay. Um, Anthropology JOA Burgundy Sweater. I got $15 for that. A uh, cache black, red, beige, white dress, size 4, sold for $19. Thank goodness, because that thing's been sitting for a while. And I had a bundle for $55. It was a pair of Tory Burch pants that I have had for six months. And I've had those priced as low as $25. And nobody wanted them. They're in perfect condition. I mean, like, the excellent condition. There was no wear, nothing. Nobody wanted them. So I bundled that with two anthropology items. And she offered $55, and I accepted. Um, uh, Fry Avery Thong Leather Sandals. I sold for $17. I had them listed for a lot more, but, you know, I just went ahead and got rid of them because, like I said, I need to get rid of some inventory. And today I woke up 
with a offer for $38 for a vineyard vine stripe floor. So this morning I woke up with an offer for $38 for this Vineyard Vine Stripe Flutter Sleeve Flounce Dress. I found that on their website. so, <laughs> um, And I just sold a Steve Madden gray tote. I still have things coming in so I I'm probably will break over 1500 for to the month of December but those are just the things that I sold for over $15 each so that means I would make a profit of um, at least $12 or more for the things that I sold over so let's talk a little bit about what I did um, to get some of these cells so I tried something called targeting my buyers <laughs> um, there is a website and I'll put it in the description below it was something that was released last January about the brands that sell on Poshmark and like it was a map and it showed like what brands were common in this area what brands are common in this area so I was like you know what I'm gonna do I'm gonna test it out so the first thing I did was I wrote down the brands and then I went and I wrote down certain areas and I decided to look at the time, the time zones, you know. So um, whenever I share my closet, now I share all different times, but when I'm targeting my buyers, I want to get them when they are, when they're doing what I do. So if I'm going to buy something from Poshmark, I'm usually laying in the bed, it's, I'm getting ready to go to sleep. And I'm just on my phone and I'm just looking around. That's when I do it, whenever it's time for bed. So I decided, okay, well, I go to bed between 10 and 1 a.m. <laughs> Not really, usually 2 or 3. But anyway, so just say I go to bed between 10 and 1 a.m. So if I want to target somebody in California, then I know I have to share my items that are trending in that area, whatnot. I'm going to share that at the time that they would probably be in bed. So if they if they're going to bed at 10 o'clock so they're three hours you know behind us so that's what 10 11 12 1 so at 1 a.m. is when I start sharing my closet and honestly I will stay up till 3 a.m. sharing my closet and I develop more likes than anything and of course when you get more likes and you can start sending offers to people but that's something that I've been doing. I've just been targeting them based on that. I'm thinking of the time zone. Like, when are the people on the West Coast in bed? Well, whenever I'm in bed at 1 a.m., they're just probably just now getting in bed or about to get in bed. So I go ahead and start targeting them at that time. Um, as for this area, um, obviously, when I first get in bed, I'm sharing, 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 sharing. And it's worked because of the majority of my buyers... And for the month of December, we're in Georgia, which is the state right below me. So, I don't know. That's how it works out. So, yeah, make sure that you target your buyers. So, something else that I did was I wanted to see what was trending on Google. So, I went to Google Trending, and I'll put that in the description below also. And I just typed in brands. So, I typed in anthropology. And it showed me which location in the United States had the most um, searches for anthropology. So um, Washington DC had the most searches for anthropology. So I knew, okay, well, it, my anthropology, I'm gonna start sharing, you know, during peak times for East Coast. And then, um, I'm trying to think. Anyway, you get the drift, right? You understand, use those sites Try to do some research because honestly, that's what I did this month. I had a goal set. I'm sorry, my phone's going off because apparently Cardi B is just blowing up Twitter. Um, I'm just, researching was my biggest thing. I'm trying to do things differently in 2019. Um, I really would like to make working on Poshmark my full-time job. Even though I've been out of work for a month now because the doctor won't let me go back to work. I don't even know why, but... Um, you know, I've been sitting here thinking, do I even want to go back? Like, do I want to go back? Should I just continue doing this? Like, I, I don't know. But anyway, all right, guys. So that was it for the video. Um, 
be sure to watch the next video. It's basically going to go over what I'm going to be doing differently on the channel in 2019. Bye.